Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. I'm happy to see your face, but if you're new and maybe you like what you see, just maybe, please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty. And one of the things that I enjoy doing here on my channel is a good old fashioned foundation review and wear test and that is exactly what we're doing today in this video today I am reviewing the new makeup forever HD skin matte velvet powder foundation say that ten times fast because woo child that was a lot so this is a new powder foundation on the market from makeup forever it touts itself as being full coverage long wearing waterproof and it's best for oily combination and normal skin so dry skin beware it's not recommended for you but who's gonna tell you what to do right if you like a powder foundation and you have dry skin as long as you prep your skin for it then you're good to go so I am going to go into the product details as well as give you a demonstration applying this product to my very oily skin I'm also going to do a wear test because that's the true testament of a foundation right how does it actually wear and since it's recommended for oily skin which I do have then I am a great candidate for testing in this foundation out and I will go ahead and leave timestamps down below so you can navigate this video however you choose and without much further ado let's go ahead and jump into this demonstration wear test and review for the new makeup forever HD skin matte velvet powder foundation all right so as I mentioned before this is the new makeup forever HD matte velvet 24 hour undetectable blurring up powder foundation say that 10 times fast oh my god this is a very long name but this is a new powder foundation from makeup forever it retails for $43 and is available in 32 different shades it contains 11 grams of product or 0.38 ounce and the shades are broken down into four different shade families of light medium tan and deep and three undertones of red neutral and yellow this product was made in France and has an intended usage life of 12 months and I'm going directly to the makeup forever a website to pull up their product description features and benefits I like to go directly to the manufacturer and read through their claims and application tips and tricks because I feel like they're the ones that should be telling me about their product and how best to use it so on the makeup forever website it says totally undetectable we created HD skin matte velvet to deliver natural looking matte coverage that doesn't cake or crease one swipe foundation HD skin matte velvet powder foundation corrects blurs and mattifies the skin for up to 24 hours thanks to a combination of three different powders in just one swipe it covers imperfections reduces redness refines pores and smooths texture achieve medium to full coverage with this buildable formula available in a variety of shades to enhance every skin tone with four shade families as I mentioned before light medium tan and deep and three undertones red neutral and yellow HD skin matte velvet is a clean formula created without animal derived ingredients and is suitable for normal combination or oily skin types it's also water resistant sweat proof and smudge proof with a silky smooth formula this powder foundation applies flawlessly over skincare such as a moisturizer or primer without creasing they also give you an outline of how to determine your undertone by looking at the veins on your arms or hands if your veins are blue you have cool undertones your ideal shade will begin with an R if your veins are green you have warm undertones and your ideal shade begins with a Y if your veins are in between you have neutral undertones and your ideal shade will begin with an N and I'm taking a quick look at the ingredient list here on their website and there seems to be a different ingredient profile depending on your shade match so for my specific shade which is 4Y60 the formulation includes synthetic fluoroflogopite as the main ingredient which is a synthetic mica 
We also have silica, which I know is for oil control. Alumina is also like a slip and oil control ingredient. We have dimethicone and methicone. Those are silicone ingredients, again, for smoothing and slip. Nothing here is jumping out to me as a questionable ingredient. And of course, since this is a powder foundation, the ingredients are going to be powder based, right? So you're not going to see any waters or oils. It's mainly a dimethicone, silica, and mica formulation. I also want to make sure that I read through their application tips. For me, makeup is kind of intuitive, like a powder foundation, you just apply it with a brush or a sponge, right? But I want to make sure I cover all my bases just in case there's something that they're recommending that I don't necessarily factor into my application. And there are three different levels of coverage that you can get from this product. There's sheer coverage, medium coverage, and full. And for all their coverage levels, the first step they recommend is that you prep your complexion with their step one primer hydra booster for added hydration. For me, that just means prep your skin with your regular skincare as you normally would, or you can use a hydrating primer. For share coverage, it says to use their brush number 160, which is just a foundation brush, starting from the center of your face. You can use a press and roll motion swiping outwards. You can also use this product as a setting powder to layer on top of liquid foundation. For medium coverage or touch-ups throughout the day, it says to apply using the plain side of the included sponge starting from the center of the face outwards. And then for full coverage, it says to apply and build using the logo side of the included sponge, starting from the center of the face again outwards. And then there's a pro tip for drier skin types. They recommend that you use their mist and fix hydrating setting spray for an extra boost of hydration all day. So this again is recommended for normal combination and oily skin perfect for me because I have oily skin. And I'll show you up close what my skin looks like before we go in for this demonstration. I have oily combination skin, but I am mostly oily. And I get oily within an hour or two once I wash my face. My skin is very greasy. It produces oil like nobody's business. And I have enlarged pores on my cheek area by my nose, and my nose is the ultimate culprit for producing oil throughout the day. I also have some fine lines in my forehead and around my mouth, as well as some discoloration. I have hyperpigmentation right around my mouth and chin area, as well as some acne scarring and freckling. I also have dark under eyes. So we're gonna see just how well this foundation lives up to the claim of being sheer to buildable full coverage and how it pans out on my oily, oily skin. So I'm starting off with clean, freshly washed skin. I haven't applied my moisturizer just yet. So this is my skin like fresh out the shower or right after I've washed my face. So now I'll go in with a moisturizer. I'm using this one from Make Beauty. It is their Succulent Skin Gel Cream, which is a serum weight moisturizer. And it is a very lightweight moisturizer. It is a gel cream, which is ideal for my skin type because like I said, I have very oily skin. And I am using a couple of pumps because I've tried this moisturizer out before. It's very lightweight. It does feel like a serum lotion and it sinks into the skin really well. So I am applying that all over my skin. And I am going to let this sit for a few minutes to absorb fully. And then we'll go in with the powder foundation because I don't want it to disturb the powder. I want to give it a fair shot. All right, so now my moisturizer has had a chance to sit on my skin and fully absorb. There is no sticky residue left behind. You can also go in with a makeup primer if you prefer or in addition to your moisturizer and skincare. But I'm just going to use the skincare for now. We're testing this out so I don't want to layer up too many products either to give it an advantage or a disadvantage. So I'm going to grab my compact and like I said my shade is 4Y60. So this is for warm undertones. The shade name is Warm Almond and it is recommended for tan to deep skin with yellow undertones. And usually I prefer to get a neutral foundation because a yellow foundation you can see can look a little bit too mustardy on my skin. But we're gonna see how this fares. 
we have the sponge that's included. I will use this on one side of my face, but I'm gonna start out with a brush. And they did recommend using their 160 brush, which looks like this. It's a candle style brush, and I do have one. So I'll use this a little bit. This is for sheer coverage. I don't think this is gonna do anything, but I'll try it out, and then I'll go in with an actual foundation brush. But let's go ahead and apply this foundation on one side of my face using that rolling motion, the rolling press. Okay, I wanted to try it over my acne scar for sure and it's covering it up. Oh my God, can you see that? Let me come in a little bit closer. I think with a powder foundation, it's a little bit easier to show the coverage being built up this brush is actually working pretty well. It is from Sydney Grace. It is their face number two brush. Wow, okay. That is nice. So if you wanted a sheer application, you could use this method. Let me do a little bit in my forehead area. Also, if you're using this over liquid foundation or like a skin tint for added coverage, I would recommend using a brush. I am going to go in with a denser brush. This is from Tarte. It is one of their foundation brushes. It is a round synthetic brush and I'm just going to pick the product up on the brush and press it instead into my skin. This would be my preferred method of application. <gasps> actually, hold on. I'm going to actually apply some cream products on the other side now that I think about it. I should have applied my concealer under my eyes first. What you want to do is make sure you apply all your liquid and cream products before you go in with this powder. But this, like, look at this side. I look a little blotchy, a little uneven. And then this side looks smooth and mattified. That is actually pretty nice. I like that. All right. Let me do some concealer and I'll use a hydrating one. This is from Tarte. It's their Power Flex Concealer. I'm gonna apply that under my eyes. And you know what? Let me also use a little bit of corrector. This is from e.l.f. This is their orange corrector. I'll use that around my mouth for some of that discoloration. And I'm seeing if it will cover up the orange corrector because the orange corrector can be a little bit intense for sure. All right, let me tap that out just a bit with my dampened beauty blender. This is such a beautiful beauty blender. It is a sapphire, okay? When they did their special limited edition colors for holiday, they had this blue one. So pretty. So we have my concealer under my eyes and then my corrector. And I'm going to go in with the sponge. So for medium coverage, it says to use the plain side of the sponge. And then for fuller coverage, you use the side with the Makeup Forever logo. The difference in the sides is not apparent just looking at it. But once you feel it, the Makeup Forever side is a little bit smoother. And then the plain side is a little bit more... Hmm, like fuzzy, it's a little bit more airy. It almost feels a little bit flocked. So I'm going to go in with the plain side of the sponge and tap it under my eyes. That's for the medium coverage. Mm-hmm, and let me put it over the corrector. That covered really well. Let me use the Makeup Forever side now, which is the smoother side, and that's going to build up coverage. You can swipe. Okay, just swipe it over your skin. I should probably zoom in a little bit so you can see this. So I am pressing and swiping the product, and it is gliding pretty well. Now, I see a little bit of gap right here where my concealer is, so I'm just gonna make sure I blend that out. Okay, so if you apply it over a damp product, it can kind of catch a little bit, so just make sure you blend well. And, ooh, you can see the coverage difference there in my forehead. That's the side where I already applied product, building it up, and then no 
foundation so let's do that now yeah, wow yeah you definitely see the coverage added on mmm that's fantastic let me go ahead and continue that yes and again one side I have concealer on and I set it with the powder and then one side there's no concealer this side is the full coverage side that we use with the sponge, right? And then this side is the sheer coverage side, which we only used a brush. Yeah, I can see the difference. Can you let me back up a bit? This side, full coverage, right? And then this side, sheer coverage. Do you see it? There's definitely fuller coverage on this side. I even look like blanked out. It's crazy. And then on this side, it's more sheer. Let me try to now build up the sheer side with the sponge. I'm using the Makeup Forever side, which is the side for more coverage. And there's no concealer on this side. So let me just build up. See how it goes without a concealer or a corrector over my dark spots. And let me go all up on my nose. Okay, so I definitely was able to build up coverage. This looks like full on coverage, guys. And there's darkness under my eyes still because there's no concealer on this side, but I think it did a pretty decent job, even around my mouth. I think, yeah. Let's see what it looks like up close. It doesn't look like caked on powder. This is actually pretty interesting to me with a powder foundation. I've used powder foundations in the past, but I haven't like really packed them on on their own. I've always set my liquid foundation with the powder foundation rather than using it on its own. So this is a different experience for me. I wanna see if I can apply cream products over it. So I'm gonna go in with my concealer under my eyes. Same Tarte concealer that we used on the other side and just blend it out to see how it interacts with other products. Let's see. I'm going to check it out in a mirror. Oh wow, guys, guys, it does not seem to be caking up. It's not interfering at all. I like that. Wow. Okay. Let me do a little bit of concealer around my mouth. Okay. We already powdered and everything, but I want to see how it works with a damp sponge. Just blend it out. It's not caking up at all, even though I layered on a decent amount of powder. And it doesn't feel heavy because it's powder. So it doesn't feel heavy. That is actually pretty nice. And the color is actually okay. It's not the best. I do look, look, you see, I look a little bit more yellow. <laughs> look a little bit more mustardy. Yes, I know because again, this is a yellow foundation. My neck and my chest are gonna look different, okay? But I don't mind so much. I'm going to just buff over it with a large brush with nothing on it. Just to see. Yeah, that looks nice. And I'm gonna go in with a bronzer. This is a powder bronzer. Since this is powder, I can go over it with other powder products to see how they interact with it without impacting the wear because I'm not setting anything down with powder. It is already powder. That bronzer adds a little bit more color to my skin and it's a little bit more of a truer bronze. So it looks good. Let's do a quick blush as well. Again, another powder product. Just popping that on. Maybe I should go a little bolder with the color because really at this point, I can, right? It's not, again, going to impact the wear of the product because the product itself is powder. 
and the powder products are building and blending pretty well over this powder so it's interacting with other products pretty well and I think the coverage is amazing it is really amazing and I've used this powder so far with liquid foundation and I have the same reaction I think this looks great so let me show you what this looks like before and after application I am very impressed I was able to get pretty decent coverage out of this powder I kind of expected it but not as much intensity as I got I expected it to even out my complexion a bit and definitely mattify but it really did even out and give me great coverage and the finish is really beautiful it's natural it doesn't look cakey or dry which is interesting I can't see powder on my skin at all and I love that for me and it also interacted well over concealer and even when I applied concealer over it after I already applied the powder so that is an interesting little experiment as well so we're gonna show you what this looks like now in natural daylight let me just pop on my mascara and then show you what this looks like in natural daylight okay I have regrouped and I realized that we didn't do a time check so it is currently 502 we've been wearing this foundation now for about I'll give it mm, 10 to 15 minutes more than you know the five o'clock check-in but we're gonna still use five o'clock as our time check so five o'clock full face let me move oh 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 did my mascara and I actually ended up putting some concealer on my eyelids and applying the powder over it and dare I say that looks amazing I love it so with the lighting down how about I show you what my skin looks like now so we get a better like a better little view we'll still do the pop-up shots of the before and after but I just wanted to show you what my skin looks like right now in this tamed lighting I think everything looks great let me go ahead now and show you what this looks like in natural daylight and I'll also show you the deceptive the betrayer of them all the iPhone camera so here it is studio lighting let me go outside and show you natural daylight and just a heads up guys it's about to get windy I apologize for the sound some direct sunlight so we can get an even different effect all right so now I'm in direct sunlight what do you guys think I think it looks really good am I tripping I mean it's golden hour right now so of course my skin looks really good with the filtered lighting but I think the foundation like y'all tell me right it feels very lightweight it doesn't feel tight and flat matte right I think that looks good let's see what the iPhone camera does to betray me all right so here's the iPhone camera this is the front facing camera and you can see my pores and a bit of texture but I think wow my skin still looks pretty good except for like the pores but yeah I think this looks really good let's get some direct sun or filtered sun through some trees this looks really good guys let me back up back up into the full-on sun y'all my skin looks really good am i tripping when i'm editing i'm gonna be like no it doesn't no it looks good to me it looks good so here you have it natural daylight all right guys it is now 704 so this is my two hour check-in two hour how two hour check-in right let me tell you something right now 
I have not blotted, I have not touched up, and this foundation looks so good. And it looks good in the sunlight. But I am a little bit shiny, I'm a little bit glowier, and my nose, which is the primary area that I get oily, is doing its thing, right? But it's not even as bad as I would expect with just a powder foundation. Maybe I should expect more. Anyway, here's the check-in. It looks good, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I really like how it looks. Overall, I will say this foundation looks pretty good and it's wearing pretty well considering that I was outside, I was going on about my business in some heat and humidity. This still looks pretty nice. However, I do have some settling into my small lines, especially on the left side. I have a little bit of creasing. But other than that, nothing else has broken up on my skin. There's no separating or splitting of the foundation with my oils. It just looks good. And I realized that I didn't do the transfer check, which I like to do with a foundation that says it's transfer proof, it's water resistant, all these things. So I have my paper towel. Now, I expect this to transfer a bit because my oils have already broken through, but we're gonna test it anyway. Let's do pressing in my forehead. There is some transfer. Pressing on my cheeks. Just a little bit. Let's do next cheek. Like it's very little transfer if you can see, like very minimal. And I think this is due to the oils in my skin. And I'll test the claim again on my own when I wear it a second time to test out the longevity there is more transfer around my nose because my nose is where I get oily and that's where the most oils are gonna be. Here's my little smile line. I'm gonna actually just try to buff that out with my brush. And yeah, the foundation is refreshed. It looks great. I will say I pulled on this t-shirt over my face and there wasn't any transfer to the neckline, which usually happens with close fitting necklines like this. Obviously, I'm gonna rub against my skin and I put this on right after I put on the foundation. So, minimal, minimal transfer. Around my nose there was more transfer, but otherwise, very minimal. So, that's two hours in, two hours and some minutes. I'm going to let this continue to marinate on my skin and I will check in a little bit later. I just had my dinner. I think I'm gonna have some crumble cookies. So if you wanna see a cookies and chat video with me, then stay tuned. It's probably going to be posted soon, maybe even before this video, but so far so good. I really like how it looks and it looks really great in sunlight. So I'll see you guys in a couple more hours. All right, check-in number two. It is 9.28. So we've had this foundation on now since five o'clock. So we're four and a half hours in, officially we can say. And I blotted at the two hour mark. Oh, let me come in, chill. All right, here's the thing. I've been in the house, I filmed the video, I ate some food, and the foundation is looking like any other foundation would at this point in wear. My nose is oily. My nose always gets oily, and I don't think any foundation I've ever worn has held up to that. Whether it's a liquid, a skin tint, full coverage, media, it doesn't matter, okay? The oils in my nose defeats every foundation. But I think this still looks pretty good. Four hours in, my skin doesn't look too oily, right? It looks like skin, it looks just a regular schmegler skin. Nothing has settled into like fine lines except this line around my mouth. But I know if I'd used a primer, this would look a little bit better. But for what it is, this is wearing pretty well. It is wearing kind of like I would expect a liquid foundation to wear, honestly. And that kind of excites me. It's different for me to wear a powder foundation on its own. And I think this is something that I will try again. 
I'll try it with a moisturizer and primer, like my whole situation set down and see how it fares. I will say it's very easy to touch up, right? Boom, blot, and it's light new. I do get a little bit of transfer because of course the oils are breaking down the makeup, but it's not like a lot of transfer. And like I said, my initial application, when I put my shirt on, there was no transfer to my shirt. So that was also very surprising given that it is a powder foundation. I just realized I did not film the actual check-in, so you're just gonna have to see it up close and take from this what you will, and also rely on my first check-in, which is kind of similar results. My face is oily, it's greasy, my nose got a little bit shinier, as expected, but I'll give you a close-up so you can see my forehead I blotted, the foundation is not wearing away. It looks pretty good. And it's not breaking up or settling. I think it looks good. I would prefer if it was a little bit more long lasting, but they did recommend using like a primer for more long wear. But on my oily skin, I think this is wearing pretty well so far. I am not going to wear it any further, but I will be testing it out some more. So you will get my final thoughts right now. So far, so good. This is just with moisturizer and with the powder foundation. And all my other wear tests with foundations, I've worn them without a moisturizer. And this one I had a moisturizer on to begin with. So what I'm gonna do in the next couple of days is try it out with no moisturizer. I'll try it out with primer and we'll see, like I'll do a full face and see how this fares. And then after doing all that, I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. So here's my check-in. I'm sorry there won't be like a before and after, but consider it like the same as the first check-in, same results. So here you have it, four and a half hours in. I will now go ahead and wrap up with my final thoughts, which will be quite a few wears later. All right, so now that you guys have heard all the product details and claims, you have gone through the demonstration and wear test with me, as well as saw the product up close and personal, let's go ahead and jump into my final thoughts for this foundation. And I like to start out with the price point. Now this foundation, as I mentioned, retails for $43 for 11 grams of product, and that to me is a little bit steep for a powder foundation where you're not getting a ton of product. However, remember liquid foundations and powder foundations are kind of measured differently. And you may be thinking that there's not a lot of product here for that $43 price point. And I kind of agree with you, but then I disagree as well. Remember, this is a powder foundation. You're getting 11 grams. And I don't have any direct powder foundations to compare it to but I will compare it to my pressed powders. We have the Make Beauty Diffusion Set Powder. This has 7.5 grams. The Kosas Cloud Set has 9.5 grams, and my NARS Powder has nine grams. So compared to a pressed powder, which is just a finishing or setting powder, you're getting more product here, and you have more coverage. So if you use it kind of like I use a powder foundation as kind of a layering step to my liquid foundation, then I'm getting bang for my buck here. But if you're gonna use it strictly as a powder foundation on its own, then you might run through this a little bit faster than you would say a pressed powder product. But I still think you're getting a decent amount of product for the price point. And the price is in line with other Makeup Forever complexion products, whether that's their cream, liquid, or powder products. But I know $43 has a sting to it. No one really wants to pay $43 for a powder foundation. But here's the thing, Makeup Forever has sales a lot on their website. Even right now as I'm filming and once this video goes live, they have a 25% friends and family sale ongoing until March 27th. Now if you watch this video after that date, I can't guarantee you that you'll catch a sale, 
but right now you can get 25% off. So this foundation is going to be less than $33. And at that price point, I definitely think this powder foundation is worth checking out. And if you're able to grab it on sale this time around, great. But if you're not, you can still sign up for their email list and they have 25% and 30% off sales all the time. So just keep your eye out in case you're curious and you wanted to check out this foundation. As far as the packaging goes, come on this is so stunning to look at even the boxes that these come in are pretty cute with the red and black and white theme in i know this is a stripped down professional makeup brand but i still always liked their packaging and i love how they're doing their complexion products so what they do is color code the lid of the compact to match the shade that's inside so of course this is going to be a deeper richer shade than this one and I love that about them. On the back, you have a plain label with the Makeup Forever logo, manufacturing information, and the shade number. I picked up two, so I have three Y56 and four Y60. So the three is lighter, the four is darker. And the compact opens up with this little push button tab that unlocks the lid and in the lid you have a mirror and of course you have your powder foundation and the powder puff applicator and i really enjoy this little applicator as well it has the two sides as i showed you in the video and both sides work really well so you can use the flocked side to just finish your makeup and to do touch-ups and use the latex side to do more full coverage application and it works so well. I am impressed by the little sponge. I don't usually like using sponges in compacts like this, but this is actually really functional. And you can rewash the sponge so you can have a clean one on the go. So I love this compact. I think it's beautiful, it's sleek, it's easy to travel with, and it's easy to open and use, and it holds secure so you can toss it in your bag. Overall, love the packaging. Absolutely adore how they present their complexion products. And as far as purchasing this foundation goes, you can buy it in store at Sephora or online through the Sephora website. It's also available in store at Makeup Forever Boutique. So if you have one close to you, I know one is in New York City. So if you have one close by, you can hop in and check out the shades. You can also purchase online through the Makeup Forever website where remember I told you they have sales all the time. So maybe you can catch it on a discount and you can also purchase it through other Makeup Forever retailers. I like seeing complexion products in store. So I'm happy to report that the majority of Sephora stores, if you have one close to you will have this in store so you can go ahead and get shade matched appropriately now as far as the product and the performance let's talk about it let's start out with the shade selection so there are 32 shades available and three different undertones so we have red yellow and neutral indicated by r y or n in the shade number and quite frankly, this shade selection is not very inclusive. It's not as expansive as I would have expected. There are no olive undertones, for instance, and the shade range is kind of dismal considering that this is a professional makeup artist brand. There are no really true light shades or deep rich shades. My shades that I use are 4Y60, which matches me pretty well. And then 3Y56 also works. It's just a little bit lighter, but 4Y60 works extremely well. Guess what the deepest shade is? Yeah, 4Y75. Did you expect that? No, you didn't. And they claim this is for very deep skin tones with neutral undertones. Where, where? This is a pathetic shade range and I'm very upset like I didn't expect this from Makeup Forever because they tend to have a pretty expansive shade range so I'm disappointed to see the shade range. I lucked out and got a shade match but people that have richer deeper skin are going to be excluded and if you have really fair skin as well you will be excluded. All of undertones forget about it so I'm disappointed to see this and I just wish they would do better 
Maybe they'll expand the shade range, but I think starting out they should have had a proper shade range. As far as the application goes, I will let you know right now that I was a little bit apprehensive about using a powder foundation, but the included sponge applicator that I already mentioned is really great for applying this foundation. It swipes on really well and gives me the coverage that I'm looking for without much fuss which i kind of expected it's a powder foundation how is it going to give me full coverage it really does give great coverage i'm wearing it right now in a full face of makeup and it looks like i have a liquid foundation on i have full medium coverage it's covering up my hyperpigmentation i can't get over how easy this is to apply and i use a foundation brush and this fits perfectly in the little pan to pick up the product and press it into my skin. This is from Tarte, it is their foundation brush. It presses this foundation in so well. I get the coverage, it layers up really well, and it's lightweight and breathable. They mentioned that as one of their claims, and it's absolutely true. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It's very lightweight, it's very comfortable. My skin doesn't feel tight, it doesn't feel cakey at all and it doesn't look cakey either. That was another one of my concerns. This is a powder foundation. Is it gonna look really heavy on my skin? It does not. It looks really great. You saw in the demonstration, you saw in the wear test, it looks really nice on my skin. No matter how much I layered this up, it never got to the point where I thought it was powdery or cakey or heavy. So I will give them that. It's lightweight, it is breathable, and it is a matte finish. Now, it's a natural matte finish, so don't be too nervous, especially if you have dry skin and you're like, maybe I wanna try it. Just prep your skin really well with your skincare. Maybe use a hydrating primer and then apply this. It has a beautiful natural matte finish that I absolutely love, and the coverage is definitely there. Now, would I say it's full-on coverage, like full, full coverage? No, but I think it's a full medium coverage, and it's buildable. You can share it out, depending on you know the coverage you're going for and your application technique. You can share it out, you can build it up, it can cover hyperpigmentation, it covers my darkness under my eyes. It's great, so the coverage is definitely there. So another tick for them. I will say that it has minimal transfer. So I tested the transfer when I'd already been wearing the foundation for a while. So I didn't really want to chalk that up as my transfer test. How about we do a transfer resistant test right now? I've been wearing this foundation for a while, okay? And I did just reapply some of it to kind of take down the shine. So let's see how the transfer resistance holds up now. No transfer no transfer and when i put my shirt on during the wear test there was no transfer on the shirt at all so i am very impressed with the transfer resistance of this foundation now is it a hundred percent transfer proof no but incidental transfer if you're wearing a mask or you hug someone it's not just going to come off, which I do like. I know during the demonstration, it seemed like it transferred, so I wanted to definitely do that update and tell you that the transfer resistance is definitely there. It's not 100% transfer proof, but it definitely is transfer resistant. As far as it being waterproof, I did not test that out, but I can comfortably say it's probably water resistance as well as being transfer resistant. That makes sense, it kind of correlates. So I'll give it water resistant. I don't know about waterproof because I have like ducked my face in water. I'm not going swimming in this, so I don't know that I need it to be waterproof. But if I get incidental water on my face, it doesn't just wash off, but it removes really easily with your oil cleanser and your regular face wash. It will remove easily. So it doesn't just stick to your skin forever and never move. I mean, makeup forever, but it's not gonna stay on your skin forever. So it does remove really well. So it claims to blur the skin. I do think it has a great blurring property. It's a powder after all, so it fills in pores, especially if you use a pore filling primer preemptively, which I did. I use the Glow Recipe Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drops today, and it definitely blurs the skin. And on its own, it does also blur the skin and even out your texture. So if you have enlarged pores, it can give you a smoothening effect. However, it's not going to make you look completely porcelain, 
but I will give it a tick for that blurring effect because I do think it has a beautiful silky texture that glides over the skin and kind of airbrushes some of that, you know, uneven texture that you may have on your skin. And I will agree as well with the undetectable, non-caking, non-creasing finish. That's true. I will give it that. It didn't really settle into lines. It didn't crease. It was undetectable. It didn't look like heavy powder on my skin and it never got cakey. The only thing I will disagree with with this foundation is that it controls and reduces shine. Now, if you use it to touch up, yes, it reduces shine that way. However, if you're thinking it's going to control shine throughout the day on oily skin, no, not on its own. But if you pair it with like an oil controlling product like a primer or a finishing spray, it definitely does hold up. But on its own, I'm telling you, it's going to show signs of wear. It was getting oily in my T-zone, as I have come to expect from foundations. But since this one was recommended for oily skin, I thought it would hold up a lot better on its own. On its own, I've gotten like four hours of wear before it really starts getting shiny which is fine. I don't mind blotting throughout the day and refreshing this foundation is really easy. You can simply blot and apply a little bit more powder and again it won't look heavy or cakey. But I find the best way to wear this foundation is to pair it with a pore filling mattifying primer which I have been doing and I've really enjoyed this foundation. Like I said it's comfortable to wear. It gives beautiful coverage which I don't, I still can't get over how beautiful the coverage is without looking like powder on my skin and I can use it to set my other foundations, like my liquid foundations. It works beautifully with them. So I am happy I got this foundation. I really do enjoy it, but just be mindful, it might not control shine and oil as much as it touts to, you know? It says it's gonna be like oil control and no, it's really not. It didn't control my oil, but did it look beautiful? Was it easy to touch up? Was the wear there? Yes. And I didn't do a long wear test because once it got shiny, I knew already it didn't live up to that claim. So I didn't need to keep going with the wear test, but I will tell you I've tested it numerous times after and I've fallen in love more and more and more. Like each time I use it, the more I like it. I love it with liquid foundations, like I said, and even on its own. It's so lightweight and beautiful. Like look at my skin right now. Like, come on, this is stunning. And the two shades that I use work well for me. The lighter shade definitely looks lighter and then the darker shade looks darker, but they both work really well. What I do is I go all over my skin with the lighter shade, which is 3Y56, and then I will go over as like a finishing touch with the 4Y60 as like a buffing finishing powder to help like darken up the original one, which is kind of lighter and it works really well and like I said I can touch up throughout the day and I mean come on this looks great so I love this foundation I'm happy I got it I would recommend it if you're looking for a powder foundation but if you have really oily skin just prep your skin the way you would with any other like foundation product that you're wearing but overall I think it's great the wear is there, the transfer resistance is there, the breathability and lightweight feel is there. So it definitely gets a seal of approval from my side and if you can get it on sale, that's when I think you should pick it up. So hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below if you've tried this out as well. Let us know how did it work for you and if you're able to find a shade match because like I said, the shade range is trash. I don't like the shade range at all but it is what it is. It's a powder, so maybe you can use it as a setting powder even if you don't find your perfect match. I will go ahead and leave links to where you can pick this up down below in the description box. Again, try to grab it through the Makeup Forever website so you can grab it on discount, but the Sephora sale is also coming up, so maybe you can get it that way. And I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you should be following me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.